All right. Welcome to the uh, restart for those of you that have been here before and the new Code Review weekly meetings for those of you that this is your first one. Um, Code Review has historically had a weekly UX sync um, that was attended by product and design and tech writing and UX research. Um, although we canceled that um, about a month ago <laughs> as it wasn't something we were using. But now that we've picked up um, both Alex and Matthew, um, it makes sense to sort of um, put one back on the calendar and we can we can iterate and see what makes sense from there. But um, this is a time that uh, I think for now works, but that's sort of um, my my first question, I think, for, for Alex, Matthew, and anyone who's here is, does this time work? Does it make sense? Um, and then I'm open to frequency and length questions that you may or may not have as well uh, on on what you'd like to do. Awesome. Time works perfectly for me. Um, now it's 9 a.m. in Australian time. Uh, frequency, I'm not 100% sure just yet because of the uh, amount of work we, we will be needing to sync. Um, probably let's keep this for now and then um, with with time and um, uh, when we did, we start to get more mature as a team, we, we can make a better decision. Um, yeah. Awesome. Matthew, any concerns from your side on time or frequency? Um, I don't think so. I think the time is fine. Um, frequency, sorry, my little one is up from his nap early. Um, yeah, frequency, I'm open to whatever, so. Okay. Cool. Well, we can start here and then see how it goes. Um, I also linked to both of your transition issues just for um, Ben and Amy's sakes, um, so they, they can see all of the wonderful things Pedro has given you. Um, the only thing that I thought would be sort of useful, uh, 1511 planning will be upcoming. Um, and so I was just curious for how you would like to participate or what you've previously done in other groups. Um, also no Pedro mentioned the prioritization sessions, uh, which I like doing, but, uh, realize it's a, it's an extra ask on top of, of anything else that design has going on. So. Um, just thoughts on how you'd like to be involved and in, in what you want to do there. And I guess I could link to old ones if that would help. Um, for myself, I would like to be probably at least in the beginning more involved um, just so I can get a good lay of the land and um, get organized. And in my last group, we had a PM switch and things were just kind of chaos, which was hard. So um yeah, the more in the loop I am, the better probably. But I'm I'm open to I'm I'm flexible. Yeah, same for me. Like I, I'm trying to like get my head around everything using the UX transition uh, that Pedro created, and there is a lot of stuff. So I. I think like as much involved as I can be, um, would be better. So I can start to like get my head around things a bit quicker. And um, since my time zone is a bit different, I I would like like maybe uh, if you could uh, just mark me on any issues or uh, any meetings that I couldn't participate that you think it would be valuable if I watch it when I wake up. Um, just let me know. That will be a, that will be good. Thanks. Awesome. Um, okay, yeah, and the new planning issue gets created um, automatically on the first of the month. Um, so fifteen elevens will show up tomorrow. Uh, you both will get assigned to it. I'll fix that today, so you'll both get assigned to it. Um, when it's created, and then we sort of go back in throughout the rest of the next couple of weeks until the milestone starts and fill in um, 
usually like comment threads uh, the description doesn't no typically change much but the comments will change so um you can take a look i linked to the 15 9 and 15 10 just so you can see sort of how we how we break those out and then um yeah we can go from there and see what works and what doesn't um cool the only other thing was um i know you're both now a couple of weeks in although um Matthew may be a week behind here, uh, but curious on um, what can I help you with as you onboard? What do you want from me? I know Pedro gave you a lot, but like, what else are you looking for? Or where are you at in sort of that process? And what can I help with? Um, it's a good question. I am... Yeah, still going through that issue. Um, not super far into it because I had some MRs and stuff I had to do today. Um, as far as what can you do, honestly, just keeping me in the loop with what the team was working on, I think. And hey, sorry. And I'll try to, you know, catch myself up as well. But, um, other than that, I can't really think of anything right now. Hi, I I would appreciate if you could um maybe help me to understand what state um Pedro and Annabelle left the last work uh that the validate design concepts on the uh, MRs. I I'm watching all the the videos that I can and reading the comments. Um, if there is anything that it probably it's not, um, it's not here or something that I should pay attention. Just point me, uh, to to that one. Um, for everything that I'm understanding right now, still need some validation. Um, if we could pick that up from where they stop, um, probably this will be a good idea. If we maybe continue doing the solution validation. Um, I, I couldn't really get my head around like at what stage that solution validation was finished. And if we are moving with the same concept that we have, um, or is there anything else that maybe Pedro had in mind or feedbacks that wasn't working for what I could understand, things was really on a good place uh, to move forward and just it was missing some uh, more solution validation on some small things. Um, is that true or am, am I missing something? Um, that's probably a good question for Pedro. <laughs> uh, the restructuring work, as far as I know, it has gone through um, one or two rounds of validation um like small you know five or six people sort of testing uh, and maybe that was internal only uh for restructuring um i think in general the designs are fairly close to final and there's nothing super concerning based on what they've seen so i think that is sort of like that work is closest to done in terms of design and validation and ready to be have engineering spend more time looking at it than they've sort of seen it in bits and pieces. Um, but Pedro would have a better sense of that state. The other big one was review rounds. Um, and that has basically no work done on it as I understand it. So like it has, um, there were some designs from concepts that we had like that Annabelle had sketched out and we had talked about but none of them have gone through any form of validation um there's an epic that sort of outlines goals but none of that's gone through validation and so I think that uh maybe not validation none of that's um none of the design side of that has been finalized so that one's really early and really sort of raw um and I think it makes sense to to sort of talk about that and then once i think the two of you sort of get your heads um about where code review is 
sort of in general, um, have some conversations about, you know, is that the next important thing to do? I think there's a lot of good reasons to do it, but, but I'm also, you know, blind spots and spend a lot of time in code review. And so curious if once you go through all that, you still think it's the right thing to, to work on. Does that help some? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Um, on the um, transition issue, um, I, the, you know, like in terms of priority, both are, are high. Uh, but the first one on the list was the, uh, restructure, the MR restructure. So that's what I was paying more attention to. Do you think yeah. this should be the other way around, or, or is this true? No, I think this is correct. I think the restructuring is the most important um, effort because it solves um, it solves sort of like some of the bigger foundational issues with merge request. Uh, it doesn't necessarily like introduce new features or concepts, but it solves like the organizational challenges that we have. Um, and so it's a more important usability effort. And then review rounds, important um, in the sense that it's a problem, like the, uh, and we tried to solve this once before, but it's the problem of like, how do I know who needs to work on an MR or who doesn't need to do work on an MR? Like, how do I figure that back and forth? Um, ping pong, you know, out. how do we like communicate that in the UI or let people know that that's what needs to happen. Um, so it's, it's important because we know there's friction there. It's also one of those things that like users don't necessarily, people find a way, right. And deal with it. And so like, uh, it's a little less, uh, critical in that sense, right? Like it's, it's a burning problem because we there's other things we want to build to make that process smoother, but it's not like the world is um, maybe on fire there. And so I think it's important that we look at that effort along with like other things that we could go do and sort of maybe reevaluate how we were thinking about it. And then as you two go through uh, issues, feel free to tag uh, myself or, or anyone else from the team there or post questions in Slack. Um, I'm happy to, happy to chat um, either way. Amy, I think you've got the, the next one. Next two. Unmute. Same general question. How could I help you on board? What do you need? I am a little unusual for our tech writing team in that I am all up in your business. Good luck getting rid of me. So <laughs> feel free to bring me in on anything that involves text that users see. Everything from alerts to UI text, microcopy, et cetera. The downside is that between this group and source code, I get a lot of pings. If I'm blocking you, ping me in Slack and tell me, and that'll be the next thing I work on. Because <laughs> I am used to the fire hose that is Pedro. And sometimes I would come in and I would see seven pings and I have no idea which one to work on first. Just... If I'm blocking you, let me know. And expect merge requests. <laughs> I mean, innocent smile. <laughs> yeah, and I will second Amy's um, asked to be brought in on, on all things early. Um, I had not experienced this until Amy was a part of our group, but she has been invaluable in making sure that we communicate things in the UI consistently 
and with the same like tone and language and style uh, for all kinds of messaging. And so it's really important to get her in, even on like simple things where we say, let's add an error message or let's change the wording here because it's it's really good to just make sure we keep that the same across the merge request. And so that's a, I don't know if all teams have a design or have a tech writer that's that plugged into that part of the design process. Um, but if it is, um, it is definitely something worth leveraging on on code review. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We run, we run fast and break things. <laughs> Actually, we don't break that many things, but we do run fast. On my last team, I pinged our tech writer a ton. So. Perfect. Who'd you who'd you have? Uh, Fiona. Ooh, that's a that's a tough set of time zones right there. <laughs> yeah. And Maybe. I'm I'm not I'm not used to have a copywriter. Um, since I recently joined GitLab, um, so my I was working in a compliance group, and my tech writer was even, which is great, by the way. Um, so I, you know, I took some time to ping him, and then after I ping him, I was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, this is you know amazing ideas. So I will make sure to to ping you and involve you as much as I can." And when you when you apologize, I will pat you on the head and say, "This is literally my job. It's cool." <laughs> also, I should not be trusted with front end design, so we're going to have a clear separation of boundaries here. <laughs> um, speaking of separation of of duties and things, Kai, any idea how we're going to split stuff up here? Are we making this up as we go? Um, I don't know. I don't know what conversations Alex and Matthew have had with Andy. I, I chatted with Andy some, and I will, um, from what I gathered, there wasn't a clear decision yet on what would make sense or who would pick up sort of what work. I think some of that depends on um, how Pedro is able to still support some of the restructuring effort or not based on whatever globally UX decides needs to happen. Um, one of the things that and I talked about was how um, the group had been focused before. And I want to say this, um, like Pedro was usually in longer research cycles for bigger efforts and Annabelle was much more tactical and in more work of like a current milestone mm -hmm. um and so we i think that's that's how it felt we were split before um andy proposed and i don't again i don't know if he shared this i i thought it was an interesting idea but he proposed that potentially we would do something where we have a internal to the team and sort of external to the team design focus um where one designer was maybe focused on things that code review the group is working on, and one designer is focused on uh, liaising liaising with all of the other groups um, doing things in the merge request or merge request adjacent areas. Uh, that's been a particular challenge for the group uh, and how to structure and handle that. So I was... Um, I think it's an interesting idea. I think that's that's still up in the air, sort of preferences and how people want to want to work. But I think we've that that's been floated as well. So um, no, I don't know how we'll split it, but but there are some ideas floating around. Um, I don't know. Did you have thoughts on on what might be useful for for stuff you're working on, or are you just generally curious? I'm just nosy. And Alex and Matthew, I don't know if you have preferences or thoughts either. I don't have um, code reviews had two designers for a while now. Um, and the designers sort of 
naturally split things. I wasn't ever like a, we mandated something. They sort of like gravitated to what their strengths were. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to like support and help either way. So if you have thoughts on like things you want to work on or don't want to work on or types of work that excite you or don't excite you, like we certainly have ways to accommodate those in the group. So, um, you don't have to answer now, but certainly think about it. Um, we don't do, I wouldn't expect us to change the behavior of like both of you working on the same thing. I don't think we'd go down that path. That's not something we've ever done with having two designers. We've never paired on work like full time. They will review each other's things, but it's never been like full time pairing. Uh, so I wouldn't expect that to be be the case this way either. Yeah, that makes sense. And again, I'm flexible. Um, I talked to Andy a little bit and heard his proposal and we'll see what he comes up with, but I don't have opinions yet. So <laughs> yeah, still early days. Yeah, same for me. I'm, I'm having my second catch up with Andy after this meeting. It's too early, but I'm easy yeah. as well. Uh, Ben, you've got the last one and then we'll write up against time. Yeah, yeah, we are pretty much at time. I'll just quickly say, so, um, for, uh, maybe more for Alex's reference than Matthew, Matthew may, you may have had a staple counterpart from support in your previous group, potentially, I'm not sure. Um, what we do is so it's sort of like a voluntary thing in support. We just sort of operate as sort of a, um, two-way street between support and, and the relevant groups. So a lot of the time that's us getting information from the group on um, upcoming changes, making sure the support team are aware of it and trying to be proactive about, you know, if something changes, the customer is going to be raising tickets and stuff like that. Um, we are trying to, as counterparts, also trying to help bring things back to groups as well. So if there's anything that you need, say, if you need feedback from customers on what are some of the big pain points, do we need customers that are experiencing something that we want to get direct feedback from, feel free to reach out to me as well. Um, and I'm sure I, I can come up with something to, to do that. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I didn't have a, like a stable counterpart in support. I had to like ping different people and it was kind of a headache. So this will be nice. Awesome. That, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thanks everyone. It was good to see you all. Um, we'll see you again next week. For those of you that are in America or EMEA friendly time zones, the Code Review Weekly happens tomorrow uh, at 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, I don't know UTC. Sorry. Just it's not going to happen. Uh, so 9 a.m. Pacific. 1700, I think. 17 UTC, 1700 UTC. So, yeah. That's impressive. Maybe I should get a clock. I don't know. <laughs> um, but you're welcome to join that one as well. It's on the code review calendar. I think uh, Matthew and Alex, you have access to the code review calendar. So anyone can add anything to it. And if you want like the specific invites to like show up so you get reminders and things, you can just edit any of the invites and add yourself as an attendee to any of them. Um, so feel free to edit and add, remove, change, uh, whatever you want on that calendar. Uh, that's how we, how we move them around here. So great. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, have a good rest of your day. Yep. See ya. Bye. Peace. Bye.